Hi, this is Brenda Price from Brenda Price Ministries, and I'm making a special video today, January 5th, 2020. And uh, this is actually something I've been wanting to put up for some time, so it's not like the events that have happened this week have um, brought this information together. I've been working on this, but have delayed putting it out. Uh, as most of you know, as of this date, January 5th, 2020, we are on the brink of World War III. And uh, I won't go into all the details of what has already happened, except to tell you that I had a dream last week. And in the dream, I saw, to put it in a short uh, understanding, I saw a nuclear explosion and I was bringing people into this building for their protection. And I saw people repenting. And that was over a week ago, actually. Now it's been uh, maybe a week and a half. But I was working on this information. God put it on my heart because I have been a witness over the last, uh, well, I'll be 68. I don't mind telling my age. I'll be 68 in February. And I've been in ministry most of those years. And um, the Lord has had me in a school of understanding on the events that were going to happen in the last days. That started way back when I was very young. The prophetic voice was very strong then. One thing I want to say about the prophetic voices that we're hearing right now, a lot of them are way off track. This is, not, this, this is not your year of prosperity. This is not your year of great and wonderful, beautiful, precious um, physical things that you might receive. This is a day to get right with God, to stay on track with God, to not get off center by one iota. We are now on a fast track to the book of Revelations. And if any of you know prophecy, according to Daniel and the book of Revelation specifically, the Bible tells us in the last days that there will be a one world leader, a one world government, a one world religion, and um, one world financial system all coming together, one world government, one world monetary system, with the mark of the beast so you can buy, sell, or trade. These events we've been looking at for over 2,000 years, according to the book of Revelation. And Jesus said many times, when you see these things come to pass, look up, your redemption draws nigh. And of course, that's talking about the coming of the Lord. But um, there's some things to go through. I believe right before he splits the sky, if, um, if my understanding is correct, because I've been teaching this message for many years and much that the Lord has revealed to me has indeed come to pass. Back when I started giving warnings about worldwide events, uh, I was having, having dreams, visions, and, uh, impartations of information from the Lord. And when I started giving them out, uh, they were not received, much less well received. Because during that time was the big prosperity movement where you would name it and claim it. And uh, I'm not saying God does not bless his people or give to his people, but according to scripture, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. The Bible says about uh, some of the disciples, um, how they were told. Peter was told how he would die by Jesus. He was told that one day they'll take you and do what they want. So the rain falls on the just and the unjust. During the time of the prophets of the Old Testament, they were warning about the upcoming event of the invasion at Babylon how Babylon would take over and invade Israel, which they did in three phases. So 
we are in our little um, sanctuary of prayer. We have a small audience with us today who have come to pray and take part of this video. I hope that you're not impatient today because the information I'm going to give you is important. It's important to, to your understanding of what is going on right now. The events that are yet to follow and quickly and how our response is to be. There is a um, organization and organizations that go by many names who have been setting up this one world system for many, many years. I'm sure most of you are not a stranger to all these different organizations and how they've run. But I want to enlighten you today on more current uh, things that have taken place. They've been planning since I think the early 1500s, if I remember my timeline, to bring everything into a one world system with a one world leader. Everyone having a different idea of who that would be. So I want to explain to you just something in recent, by recent I mean the last hundred and something years. And I want to go back because history repeats itself and I want you to understand one main thing today, that all the world wars that have happened since 1914 have led to the culmination of the present day system. One world, uh, no borders, all these things that it has been set up and I want you to see how they do it. I would love, 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 love to sit down with an audience for two hours and explain to them the specifics of how easy it is to start a war. World War I being a very uh, unique situation, but more than how they came about, which I, I would love to go into and don't have time, I want to explain to you not just that, but the fruit of their labor. And where they started. So let's start with World War I, shall we? In 1914, there was a group of radical young people who believed in anarchy to overthrow the current system. There were small, unstable countries, one being Austria-Hungary, and um, they were the more prominent one and then the Serbs having to fight a war with the Turks to overthrow the Turks in order to gain their country, Serb, Serbia, back, which later turned in and melted into, I believe, Yugoslavia. And all it took for that to happen was for one radical to come forward and offer his uh, services to overthrow uh, the person who would uh, maintain the government of Austria-Hungary. Austria and so Serbia agreed to this young radical and he made an effort. He threw a bomb, him and his group, uh, at our, um, Archbishop Ferdinand, I think was his name. I don't think I have that right here, what his name was. But they missed, in any case they missed, and the bomb hit the back of the car and injured some people but did not hit uh, that man and his wife who would take over the Austria-Hungarian Empire. By the way, that man was a man of peace. He did not want a war, but his death started a war, in short. So Austria-Hungary, um, had their allies, which was Germany and France, and then Serbia had her ally, which was Russia. I believe I've got that correct. Um, and so when the war started, of course, they called upon their allies and thus began World War I, which was one of the worst wars. There was more deaths in World War I than World War II. 
But what happened? What what was the fruit? What did the new world order get out of World War One that would accomplish their future hopes for a one world government? Well, we got what was called the League of Nations, set up primarily through the inspiration of President Wood, uh, Wilson, I'm not sure if it's Woodrow, but Wilson. And um, then he delivered the plans after World War I to Congress with a 14 point um, address to set up this League of Nations. And this League of Nations became, do you know? United Nations. The League of Nations was unable to stop World War II, and indeed, what they didn't clean up in World War I and the borders that they put up is what started World War II. Part of what started World War II is the completion of what they wanted to do in World War I. I have a lot of information, but I can't go into that. But the United Nations, when it was set up, it was supposedly set up for a few main things. Freedom of the sea, so that you could move um, cargo and sell your goods. And um, also to eliminate trade barriers, which if you're in the news at all listening, we've had a lot of those uh, trade barriers lifted, which melds you into one, one nation with another and uh, stop armaments and military strengths, which of course that never stopped as we know. And um, if these countries had any special secret plans, they were to reveal it. Of course, that's not gonna happen. So in any case, six nations came together and signed this League of Nations, which they ratified, you might say, at the end of World War II. Now, uh, World War I ended in 1919, and they signed off on the League of Nations in 1920. Now, it was only six months from the ending of World War I until the League of Nations was ratified and set up. And the UN, was not set up as the UN until October 1945. So end of World War I and six months later it yielded the fruit called the League of Nations, which would be the United Nations. Then World War II began October 1945. I'm sorry, ended in 1945, I believe. And um, at the end of World War II, I don't want to go, I have so many details I would love to give, but the League of Nations was set up in 1920. Let me reiterate that, because World War II began, and I have to correct something I said, September 1st, 1939, and ended September 2nd, notice one day different. It began September 1st, 1939, ended September 2nd, 1945. That's not a coincidence in my book. So the UN was signed over after World War II from the League of Nations to the United Nations a month after the end of World War II. So what did they get from World War I? The beginning of the League of Nations. What did they get after World War II? The United Nations. And three years after that, we got what was called the Treaty of Rome. So World War I, World War II helped set up the United Nations, in short. But it also helped set up what was called the League of Nations. Uh, I'm sorry, the Treaty of Rome. So six nations again signed that, and I won't go into who those nations were, you can look it up. But the Treaty of Rome began in Rome. 
and the Treaty of Rome began in the Vatican. It was actually signed in a convent and uh, was totally backed by Rome. Now, what did the Treaty of Rome do? You might say, oh, this is very boring. No, you need to know. The Treaty of Rome was signed and was the brainchild at the Vatican. What did the Treaty of Rome become? Out of World War II, some years later, after the end of the war, three years, I believe, later. In 1957, they moved the Treaty of Rome out of the Vatican, out of Rome, out of Italy, and moved it to Brussels, Belgium. The name changed in order to depart the fact that it came from Rome, and they changed their name to EEC, which is the European Economic Community. And again, the Six Nations, well, I'll just tell you, they're France, West Germany, Luxembourg, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Italy. They also signed on to the EEC, or the Eco um, European Economic Community. The EEC changed its name a couple times, but it became the common market. And again, it was signed in Rome at the beginning. So all these wars lead to world domination. When they signed the Treaty of Rome, that treaty started what we now know as the European Union. And um, a lot of things happened with the EU. It eliminated borders for the member nations. It called for free trade. It called for one currency. I'm not sure if they share the same religion, but you can see that the common market played out to the world what a centralized government could produce. They brought in workers from other countries, other countries wanting to join the EU because they were very prosperous. And they're saying, look at what we've created. This is what a one world system can do. Where was this started again? The EU started in Rome. We got this after World War II, starting with all the foundational truths after World War I. What's going to happen after World War III, which we are kind of going into? I believe that World War III will bring the finishing touches on the Antichrist system. I believe we're standing at the precipice of that war as I stand here and talk to you today. There's no war that's ever happened that did not have a bigger power behind it, that did not have a end in sight. This war, as every war, starts in strange little places with strange little names, with strange little characters, but they all do the same thing. They bring about a one world system, bringing it closer to the Antichrist system. So what is going to happen now, saints? I believe that this year that we're, we're just entering into, 2020, is a preliminary phase of World War III. And that I'm not sure the nukes will fly this year, or at least between now and what we call the election time. Whether there will be an election or not, one never knows during wartime what they're going to do. But I believe whatever weeks or days we have left before 
World War III actually breaks out in its fullness, we should use, first of all, to get our feet grounded in Jesus Christ. A lot of people come into Christianity for what it can offer. I come into Christ because he's what is offered to me. I serve Christ for Christ. I don't serve Christ for what he can give me, although he does bless me. But whether he's blessing me and giving me materially th things or whether something tragic has happened, he's the same Jesus. He's the same reward. And it's his heart I'm after. And my life is given over to the cause of Christ and whatever he's asking of me. So during these times, we're going to start seeing, if not in its fullness, we're going to see border changes. We're going to see a lot of natural disasters happen, especially at the end of this year, especially after October, I would think. If I'm, if I'm wrong about this, then I'm wrong. But I do believe that after October, is when things will begin to happen even more devastatingly across the world. Is this supposed to make you run in fear and hide? It's not doing that to me because it's written in the book of Revelations. And if you're living for this life instead of for Jesus Christ, you already are way, way ahead into the wrong kingdom because we're working for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And Abraham said he's looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. So I'm not putting my stakes in this life, in this country, but we have brothers and sisters around the world that are going to be affected by what's happening. We need to be praying for them. They want to be praying for us, I'm sure. I want you to know also that Iran has a big, thriving church of believers who really love the Lord. I want you to be praying for the church in Iran. Iran is not our enemy. Germany is not our enemy. France is not our enemy. All these other countries are not our enemies. The devil is our enemy. And our yielding with our flesh is our enemy, most of all. Jesus is going to be triumphant at the end of these days. We know that. We all know that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and receive the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. That's the day that I'm in trembling over. I want to make sure I get a well done and that I'm standing before him and my heart is purged from the self-life, from the wants and the desires of my own flesh, that I'm totally melded with Jesus Christ and him and I are on the same page on all subjects. So thank you for listening. I don't want to hold you any longer. I will be taking questions with our audience here after we close out. If you have any comments, please do leave, leave them at the bottom uh, as you look at this video. I hope and pray that you've listened to it all. I might have mixed up some of my details because there's a lot of information. But the main thing that I wanted to bring to you today is the fact that World War I and World War II yielded the one world system that we're now moving into. World War III will finish off the religious system, which now the Pope and all these religious leaders are joining together with an anthem of unity but I'm sorry, I am not unified with idol worship. I am not unified with false gospels and false messages. I'm only unified with truth. If you're my brother and sister in Christ, you might not understand the word the same way I do, but you'll understand that Jesus is our reward and that his kingdom is going to be one not by picking up a sword, but by picking up the sword, which is the word of God, and living accordingly. 
God bless you. If you have any prayer requests, please leave them at the bottom of the video and share this video. By the time you see this video, there will probably be a whole lot more events than's happened already this weekend. Uh, we're on high alert, and um, we ha had an attack today in Kenya. I don't know all the details. We're being expelled from Iraq. Troops are flying over by the thousands from our nation to the Middle East and other places. Uh, both sides are saying they're ready. So are you ready? Are you ready to obey Jesus today? Amen. God bless you.